Good evening. We greet you in the name that is above every name as we come on this blessed Wednesday afternoon as we do thank God for the sun still shining and the beautiful weather that we're having. We thank God for his grace that is so still so sufficient in our lives today. Thank you for joining in with us. We pray all is well with you and your families. We pray God is doing a great work in your life and even manifested many blessings uh, that so many that you can't even number sometimes. But we do thank God uh, for just being mindful of us and for taking care of us. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you for your greater grace of us today as we come on this blessed Bible study. We pray Dear Father, that Lord, your Holy Spirit will commune with us and Lord, be able to speak with us as we look into your eternal word. We know, Father Lord, that there is life in your word. And dear Father, Lord, that you are the giver of life and the sustainer of life, Lord, today. And Lord, we do thank you for another opportunity that you have rendered unto us as your children of men to be able, Lord, to look into your eternal word. And thank you for the hidden nuggets, dear Father, that Lord, you manifest through your Holy Spirit that allow us, Lord, the understanding of joy to be able to come into your presence. We thank you, Lord, today for all that you have done, for what you are doing, for what you will do in our future. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray that you, Lord, would bless this Bible study. Strengthen us according to your excellent grace. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we do thank God today as we come on uh, this blessed uh, Wednesday. Uh, we are talking about today commission for the work, uh, commissioned for the work, coming from John, the 14th chapter, verses 8 through 14 in our Bible study. Uh, if you would turn to that, please, and uh, in that is a, it's a great revelation, a lot of uh, things to uh, unravel for the Lord has blessed us to be able to take our time. What we don't look at today, we'll look at, Lord willing, uh, on next week. Uh, as we come uh, to still do the work of the Lord. Work. What is work? Uh, what is it uh, to work? Work, according to uh, Webster's Dictionary, it says to perform or carry out thoroughly a task requiring sustained effort or continuous repetitive operations. To exert oneself physically and mentally, especially to sustain efforts to reach a desired purpose. To get in motion, operation, or act, activate the cause of production. In the spirit, uh, we have a word that is called uh, in a energy, in energio. Energio, E-N-E-R-G-E-O, energio, from which, we, from, from which we get the word energy. Uh, that's another term for the word work. Uh, to, it means to work in or be active in the operation of or to be in use of supernatural power. So when we gather this from James 5 and 16, write this verse down and, and continually keep it with you because it speaks well to the term or to the era we're in today. James 5 and 16, James writes, confess your faults one to another and pray for one another. Listen to what he says after that, that ye may be healed, the effectual Fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So when we're talking about the fervent, uh, effectual and fervent, effectual means it's effective. That means it's purposeful. It, it, it reaches its, its potential. Uh, I, just, I just don't want to pray it go up to the ceiling and bounce back to my ear. I want to be able to reach heaven's way. I want to be able to uh, become intimate with the Lord. I, I'm not just praying to heaven. That means the Lord don't hear my voice. He hears the intent, the intimacy of, of the prayer. Uh, when you look at this, it says the effectual. Uh, effectual means I'm looking for some evidence. Uh, I'm seeking evidence uh, uh, that not only 
Do I have that relationship with the Lord? Uh, I believe that whatever I'm praying for will be made manifest uh, because of my relationship with the Lord. And, and I believe because you are a, a brother, sister in Christ, that, that even when you pray, you ought to know that God hears your prayer. And, and whenever God hears your prayer, that, you know, you got to be confident that whatever you ask of him, he is more than capable or able to do. So when I look at this, this energy, uh, which means work, and, you know, it says to us that the effectual fervent, let's look at that word fervent. That means that I'm just not coming to God and I don't believe that I'm going to get what I'm going to get. I believe within me that my prayer ought to be so fervent that I feel it even within myself that God is on the move. That even whatever I ask for, there's a fervency, there's an urgency there that lets me know that, Lord, you hear my cry. I'm dialing 911 in the spirit. I, I believe you're coming to my rescue. Now, listen here now. Now, be careful. Don't call spiritually 911 in the fervency and take it back. That means I'm putting it in God's hands and I'm taking it back. Lord, you can't handle it. Let me keep it. Well, if you want to stay up late at night, if you want to you know, be in the point by you, which you can't get no rest, if you want to be in the point by which God, you don't think God's going to work on your behalf, please don't pray. Don't pray if you don't mean it. it, it but if you mean it, be fervent in what you believe. Uh, the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man or woman availeth much. That means that availeth means he's going to show me some evidence that he heard my cry. Oh, good God Almighty. He heard my cry. Not only did he hear my cry, but he's willing and is able to answer my prayer. And we look at that word work in energio. Uh, which means work. Uh, it, it helps us to understand that there's a work for us to do. Now, we're not saved by our works, but God is doing a work in us that is more or less projected out of us. And, and we're going to get that down pat here in just a minute. God is doing a work in us that is on the work outside of us. And whenever he does the work in, uh, you've got to be able to process it out. That means that you've got to avail yourself for the purpose. Uh, we, when we ever, we get to understand that works, re work requires energy. It requires a necessity for us to be competent in what we do, uh, purposeful in what we do. That means I don't have to apologize to nobody but for operating in the spirit. Uh, I don't apologize for operating in the spirit because that's what God created me to do. So I, I do thank God today for the work that he's appointed at our hands to do. Revelation, the word revelation, an act of something uh, being made known, uh, an act of unveiling what has been obscured or hidden from natural sight, spiritually an uncovering or manifestation of that which was veiled. And when I say veiled, that means covered. And that was veiled and for the sake of knowing the intimacy. The word for that is a apocalypsis, apocalypsis, which means it's an apocalyptic writing. That means it's a day old writing. That means you can read it, but you really don't get no clarity until the Holy Spirit uh, unveils it for you. Whenever you go to read the book of Daniel, the latter part, or you read the book of Revelation, it's an apocalyptic writing, which means that it's a veil writing and it was written that way so that the natural man could not just read it and get any um, understanding. God purposed Daniel and he purposed John to write apocalyptic writing, which means it's a veil writing and only appears to those who, who spiritually are born and understand what is being written. 
So I'm going to see you say, ask the question, well, why would God uh, write a veil writing? Because it, it's not for just every man to know. Because God wants you to know it in the spirit. And if you know it in the spirit, you will accomplish what he sent for it to do. And I believe at one point, I believe he told each one of them, and don't write no more. Uh, because whatever you wrote, I, I believe it's enough. And, and I believe there's a part of understanding that God has more uh, than this word right here. There's some things that, that I believe that he didn't write. And it would be too much for us to gather. Because even when we look at, at this word right here, that's enough for us to gather and see uh, how it unveils itself. Now, there's something, uh, sometimes you can read scripture and it becomes so clear to you. And then you can step away and then God will give you a fresher revelation of it later on when you are spiritually grown enough to adapt to it. That's why I can't just read John 3, 16. And that's the only scripture I know. I've got to be able to read it and he'll give me a fresher revelation of it. Then I can read it later on when I'm spiritually uh, 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 matured enough to understand it a little, little bit better. Then he'll give me another revelation. Is the first revelation wrong? No, it's right. But God will give me the full revelation. That's why the Bible tells us we know in part. But when, when that which is part has come, then that which is in part will be done away with. That's going to be a day when God's going to reveal the whole story. <laughs> when God's going to show us the whole story of why we had to go through what we had to go through. And that, that's for him. That's why I thank God that every trial, every situation that comes my way, it helps me to gain insight on the intimacy of my relationship with Christ. And when I'm intimate and understand it, that means that everything in the natural, I, I may not understand, but he gives me uh, the understanding or gives me the understanding that later on when I mature, I understand why I had to go through that. So it helps me to grow. It helps me to know that not only did Christ suffer, but I'm going to have to suffer for some things also that I may reign with him one day. Amen. So revelation, it helps us even in our knowing. Let me, let me go back over here to uh, Psalm 103. Psalm 103. And we're going to look at verse number 7 through 14. Psalm 103, verses 7 through 14 says, He made known his ways unto Moses and his acts unto the children of Israel. Remember that one verse right there. And the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, and re nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is higher than the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us, like, a father, like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame, and he remembereth that we are dust. The Lord looks at us and remembers that we were made of the substance of, of fine particles. We are made out of dust. Even though we want to proclaim and, and want to make it look like we are above everybody else, you know, I don't care how you look at it, whether you're brown or white, uh, it doesn't matter what color you are, you just dust. You're just made of the dust of the ground. So I, I'm grateful in that understanding. God, remember that we are just dust. That's why when I go back to verse number seven, it says he made known his ways, his, his ways unto Moses and his, and his acts unto the children of Israel. What is, what is we always saying here? is that God doesn't, doesn't uh, more or less keep close what he's doing in your life. If you really want to know, God will let you know. He'll only give you an inside track. He made known his ways unto, the, unto Moses. He said, Moses, your ways are not my ways. I, 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 we, we, we don't chide. But if you just learn me, 
If you just walk with me, you will learn my way. You don't learn somebody by not walking with them. When you walk with them, you'll learn their ways and their understanding of why they did what they did. And he said he made known his acts unto the children of Israel. So God will reveal it unto you, uh, certain things of why things had to go the way they did. So that's revelation. So as we go back to our scripture today from John, the, the, uh, from John, the uh, 14th chapter, John 14, starting with verse number eight, God's nature, God's nature, uh, God's nature is experienced in the intimate knowledge between he and the believer. It is in the intimacy, it is in the intimacy that he exposes his nature, his purpose and his plan within the believer and sustains them with power. That's what we call the anointing. You are anointed for what you do. You don't need no more anointing. You don't need no more oil poured on you. You, you, you know, the, the oil is the residue, and then the residue of it is the symbolic understanding of God's anointing on your life. God has anointed you and graced you for such a time as this. You don't need any more grace than what God has availed unto you. I believe it was the Apostle Paul in Corinthians when he spoke and said, you know, you know, just remove this thorn from my flesh. Remove this thorn because every time I move, it, it, it hinders me, it blocks me, it bothers me. But the Lord said, my grace is sufficient for thee. For when you're weak, that's when I am strong. I can unveil my, my greatness. I can unveil my strength when you don't have any. <laughs> I can unveil what my purpose is when you give up your own purpose. Uh, so that's why I said when the more that we give up self, the more the Lord can use us for his glory. So whenever we get to this purpose, this was uh, when we carry out his purpose, we are acting, we are doing the work that he's appointed our hands to do. This was unveiled in Christ Jesus when he stood, went in the script in, into the synagogue and read the scripture from Luke. Uh, is in Luke, the fourth chapter. Let's go back to Luke. Now, these are two scriptures I want you to hold hold tight on. Luke, the fourth chapter, uh, starting with verse number 16 through 19, and go back to Isaiah, the 61st chapter, verses 1 through 3. Now, listen to what Luke said in uh, verses 16 through 19. He said, and he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And that was delivered unto him the book of I, uh, the prophet Isaiah. And when he had found, uh, he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Now hold your thumb, hold your place right there, put a pen, put something in there. Let's go back over to Isaiah, the 61st chapter. Now in Luke, he said the spirit of the Lord. He read over in Isaiah, where the spirit of the Lord is upon me. That means there's an anointing on his life. Uh, when we go over to Isaiah, uh, which is the same book he read from, uh, uh, starting with uh, chapter number 61, it says, The Spirit of God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captive, to the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give 
the, unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Now take what is written here from verses 1 and 2, compare it to what was written in Luke, uh, the fourth chapter, uh, verses 16 through 19. When you read this, there's something in Luke that was left out from, from Isaiah. What was left out? Uh, the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. The day of vengeance. The day of vengeance is coming. But we see Jesus here in the Gospels as the spotless lamb. He didn't come for vengeance. But there will come a day when he will come for vengeance. Uh, that's a day that he has set aside to be, you know, to, to more or less uh, you know, gather vengeance on all his enemies. But he, that wasn't the time. This time. When he came in Luke, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He wanted to more or less allow them to understand that Isaiah was talking about me. Isaiah was talking about that, that lamb that would come. Isaiah was talking about the retrieving, the, the binding up the brokenhearted. Isaiah was talking about to preach the gospel to the meek. That's what Isaiah was talking about that I would do. Why? Because there's an anointing on my life. And Jesus reflected that. And when he stood up to read, that's why he didn't talk about vengeance. It wasn't time to talk about vengeance. It was time to talk about uh, the anointing that was on his life. And that's why when you look at verse 21, he said, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. He said, I am the persona of what Isaiah talked about. And so I'm grateful in that, that God uh, revealed. Uh, and that is why even when he stood up to read, he was reading about himself. <laughs> what, what Isaiah was talking about. See, that's the beauty of dealing with the Lord Jesus. Jesus didn't come to accomplish his own mission. He come to accomplish the mission of the Father. And the mission of the Father always goes back to what his word already has said about him. So I'm, I'm grateful in that understanding that, that you've got to be able to look at both of these scriptures. So don't read uh, Luke, the fourth chapter, unless you read Isaiah, the 61st chapter. Bring both of them up and see what was left out and know that there's a day of vengeance is coming. Is coming on this earth. God will get revenge on all those uh, that go against him. And I'm grateful today. Uh, you know, it's not up to us to be vengeful. It's not up to us to get folk back. Let the Lord handle it. And whenever you let the Lord handle it, it'll be done in a great, uh, gracious way. So that's why when we come to the 14th chapter of Luke, uh, 14th chapter uh, of John, when we come to the 14th chapter of John, uh, verse number uh, 8, it says, Philip says unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Let's go to verse 9 too. Jesus says unto him, have I been so long a time with you, and yet thou hast not known me, Philip? He that has seen, has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Philip was desiring. Uh, to see, to see God and, and to be able. He said, show us the Father. And some theologians would, would go back and rehearse that he was not just looking to see in the natural the Father. He wanted to see the ways of God and he wanted to see the nature of God. He wanted to see how God really is. And that's why Jesus looked at him and said, have I not been so long uh, uh, with you that you don't know who I am? I've revealed it by my nature. And see, when we look at this, Jesus, in, in chapter number 14, it was kind of a, a, a sad time. But there again, it was a revealing time. Jesus told him, said, I'm going away. I, 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 I won't leave you comfortless. I, I will send unto you, you know, the comforter. He will, another comforter, he will come unto you. But I'm going away to prepare a place for you. And, and where I go, you know, you know, and the way you know. I believe even when it comes down to that, Thomas asked him the question, you know, Lord, we don't, 
We don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto, no man cometh unto the Father, unto the Father, but by me. So I, I look at that right here. That when Jesus, Jesus says unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said, now, if you follow me, you'll find your way to the Father. Because I, you know, I, I, that's where I'm going back to. He said, I am the way. If you want to know where the Father is, follow me. If you want to know what truth is, follow me. If you want to have life, follow me. So in that, we'll have the, the points of emphasis of how to more or less maintain life. That Zoe life. That God kind of life. That life that he said, I come that you might have life and that you might have it, what? More abundantly. So uh, I'm looking here that when, when he talks with Thomas here, Thomas was unsure uh, of how to get there, how to get to the Father. And Jesus said, just follow me. <laughs> that is simple. You, people say, you know, I want to get deep. I want to know how, the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus just simply put it, follow me. And if you follow me, you'll find the way to the Father. <laughs> uh, you'll find where you need to go. And not only did he open up this revelation, but he opened up, there was another revelation that was opened up for Philip. Philip uh, being uh, the less spoken of two, he, he wasn't a Peter. He was one who was quiet, but he was in reserve. But he knew that, that whatever you ask of the Lord, he'll reveal it unto you. And he said, Father, show, you know, he said, Master, show us the Father that it, that, that it, that it suffices us. Lord, show us who God is. Show us how God operates. <laughs> show us how God works in, in mysterious ways. And, and whenever he put this before Jesus, Jesus said, how long have I been with you? And, and, and at this point, you know, the emphasis is within that three-year span of his ministry that he done, they done seen uh, eyes open. They done seen the miracles. Uh, they done seen many things. He said, how long have I been with you? If you don't believe that I'm in the Father and the Father's in me, if you don't believe it for my words, uh, you know, that I'm in the Father, just look at the works that I've done. And, and I believe the works that I've done, they do speak what who is inside of me. That's why when you go back and rehearse this, and there's an old song that says, may the works I've done speak for me. Well, one of these days, they're going to speak for you. And, and if you've done anything, but if you ain't done anything, they ain't going to speak for you. But I, I'm grateful, even in my understanding today, that what let the works that I've done speak for me. I'm not saved by my works. I'm saved to work. I'm saved to be a reflection of who's on the inside of me. That's why I always use the analogy, and I, and I go back to the analogy. When we place uh, solar panels or a solar panel on the house, the solar panel is a, like, kind of like a reflector that absorbs the energy from the source and sends it directly to where it's needed. But the solar panel don't give you heat. The solar panel don't, don't, don't do uh, other work. The solar panel don't, don't do no cooking. But what it does, it absorbs the energy that is reflected onto it. So it needs the sun, the S-U-N, to reflect energy to where it's needed, to the water heater and all the other things that it heats and, and, and more or less gains energy for. The children of God need the S-O-N, the S-O-N, the sun, Jesus himself, and absorb his energy to more or less be able to do the work that he is appointed our hands to do. Brothers and sisters, I believe it is it said so so emphatically that Jesus put it before the disciples, without me, you can do nothing. Now the solar panel need the S-U-N. The children of God need the S-O-N. So I'm grateful in that it reflects the same part of needing energy. So let me close out. Let me close out this right here. And, and the writer uh, of Hebrews says. Uh, who Jesus was. Jesus, he said in verse number, chapter uh, number one, verse number three, he said, who being in the brightness of his glory and the express image 
of his person. That's who Jesus was. He uh, expressed image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had himself purged our sin, sat down on the right hand of majesty on high. So in that, you know, when Philip was asking, show us the father, he was asking, I want to see who God is. Now, we all know from, from biblical references that no man has seen God and lived. Uh, but but we know that Moses came close. He saw the goodness or the, you know, uh, look behind or the hinder parts of God and the goodness of the Lord. And the Bible said, even when he looked and saw, you know, the hinder parts, he didn't see them face to face. He said when he saw that goodness, it changed his countenance that he had to put a veil over his face so they wouldn't see the glory that was shown. Now, if just the backside of God can can give you that kind of experience. Just what you think the face of God can be able to do. So I'm grateful in that understanding. Jesus said, now you don't see the glorified God, but my ways, my actions, all that is within me uh, tell you who God is. Uh, I am God in flesh. And, and when I, I look at that, the word, it says, you know, the word for that his logos. Jesus is the expressed image of who God is. So he said, have I been so long a time with you? You still don't know who I am? So I'm grateful that God reveals or unveils himself. And brothers and sisters, we, brothers and sisters, I'm, so, I'm sorry, we see the glory of God every now and then in our own brothers and sisters and, and see how God is manifesting himself in the, in the understanding that when you operate and walk and, and do the things of the Lord, you understand that you couldn't do that without the Lord being in your life. So that's why you, every now and then you will have a Nicodemus to come by and say, well, how do you do this? How are you able to do this? And you got to tell them the truth because it's, it's Christ that, excuse me, that lives in me. So we're grateful in that understanding. Don't ever take credit for what God is doing. God is doing a great thing in your life and he's unveiling himself in you. So right now, uh, that's why you got to understand the things that you go through. It helps you to understand God is crucifying the flesh that he may have the right to live and use you just like that. Just like those solar panels that absorb energy. That's the way God wants us to do. Absorb his energy and reflect it to where it needs to be. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity that you have rendered unto us as children of men to understand, dear Father, that you are doing a great work today. We ask, dear Father, that you continue to use us, Lord. Bless that soul that near, that's near as hell, Father, Lord, and Lord, retrieve them before it's everlasting too late. Let them know that you still save, you still heal, and you still deliver. Today, Lord, we pray that you work a work in, Lord, these people, Lord, your people. Dear Father, that, Lord, their, their minds cannot even contain. Today, Lord, continue to use us for your glory. Continue to help us to walk out your word in fear and trembling. In Christ Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Thank you again for joining in with us. And we pray that as we return on next week, we'll take up another part of this. And I hope you are excited about the Lord as I am because he's doing a great thing even in my life, just like he's doing in your life. And if he do, if he's done one more thing, if he, if he doesn't do another thing, you ought to say to God, be the glory. God bless you. May heaven smile on you.